morning. Pat Ziemer here with MagnaWave, CEO of MagnaWave and founder. Glad to be here this morning for MagnaWave Office Hours. We provide the Office Hour segments every Tuesday at 9 in the morning and then again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the purpose is transparency. The purpose is to answer any questions that you may have with regard to PEMF therapy, with regard to MagnaWave, uh, any questions that you may have, machines, products, supplements, training, certification, uh, FBI, uh, FDA, <laughs> whatever those questions may be, we certainly want to be able to be here and answer any questions that you that you may have. Uh, there are several ways to ask the questions. You can text your question to 502-271-8400, 502-271-8400, there it is uh, on the screen. Certainly, you can email them if you would like to, to magnawave1 at gmail.com. <clears throat> They'll come right up here on my screen. I'll be able to ask, uh, answer the questions. Sometimes folks want to ask a question and they don't want it to show uh, on the Facebook page that they're asking a question. That's fine. So text the question or send me an email and we'll be happy to uh, answer it for you at that time. Uh, also, uh, let's see what else we got here. If you would like to call in and visit with me, give me a shout at the number on the screen there, 502-599-9722. Be sure to mute your computer speakers because there is some a little bit of a delay and don't want to get it uh, confusing or hear a thing, reverberation or that type of uh, that type of situation. So again, we're here to answer any questions that you may have this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. There are several people who are getting, uh, who have joined us at this point. If you'd be so kind, share this so perhaps your friends can join in as well. They may have some questions that they would want to uh, have answered and uh, we'd be happy to do that. So uh, I'll get into some questions that we've received in the last few days and uh, go over some of those questions. Um, so we have a question here. Let me get my, come up to where we, where we are. Someone asked a question about, uh, this is a marketing question asked by a uh, practitioner. Uh, do you provide content for your PEMF websites um, with the option to customize with your own content? And the answer to that is yes. If you uh, go to, if you looking to have a website for your business to promote MagnaWave, or if you've got another business that's uh, equine or whatever, uh, health related, and you'd like for us to help you, we'd be happy to do that. But with regard to the PMF sites, uh, the MagnaWave PMF sites, we provide the initial content, uh, to customize it to you uh, so it works for what you want to, to do. And then you can add your own content uh, as you go along. If you're not comfortable adding your own content along the way, you can send content to our uh, developers and uh, they will add it for you to the particular website that you have. So it's one of those things that we want to help you. You know, websites are very important. People say, why do I need a website? And uh, is it beneficial? Am I going to get a lot of business from my website? Well, you can get some business from your website. Certainly, we're working with advertising methods that when people come and they find the website and they put the information in, you can receive leads for your business. But the biggest thing, and this is for anybody, no matter if you're with MagnaWave or whatever, but a nice website that's professionally prepared, that has good professional information, just boosts your credibility, makes you an authority in what you're doing. It shows that you care. It shows that you are concerned about the information that you put forward. And so websites are very beneficial uh, for any business and however you do it. And, and do you get a lot of business from your website? It, it varies. Our website for us is critical to people gaining information and communicating with us. And it's the same thing for a small person, in a, not a small person, but a small business operator in any uh, area that you're in. Your first thing someone's going to do when you meet them at the coffee shop or you give them a, a, a business card at, at the uh, rodeo or whatever you're doing is they're going to click on and see if your website's there. They're also going to look at your Facebook page or your other uh, social media pages to see if you're current, if you're posting valuable information that they want to have. And that's the key, uh, post valuable information. So uh, yes, websites are critical. Facebook is critical. Social media is uh, very important to project the image and the knowledge that you want your customers uh, to uh, to gain and, and run from. Good morning, Jason and uh, I Lauer. Good morning. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, we're glad you're here. If you have any questions, just post them on the uh, Facebook page and I'd be happy to answer them. If you'd like to call and visit, uh, please do that. 
Um, another question, let's see, uh, this question, let's go here, talking about the SEMI unit, and basically this is an FEI question. It says, does the SEMI have battery capacity or current, meaning being plugged in? Uh, this person was under the impression that FEI did not allow uh, for devices that required plug-ins. Well, the new regulations that were posted are released by uh, FEI January the 1st of this year, and some of them don't take effect until later in the year, I think June or July the 1st, uh, don't address whether devices uh, can be plugged in or not. Uh, there are many devices that they talk about on the low power range that are certainly plug-in devices. There are uh, laser devices, there are cooling machines, there's a lot of different devices that FEI does allow that are plug-in devices. To answer this particular question, can the SEMI be run off of a battery pack? Yes, it can. A motorcycle type battery and a little in an apparatus that could be easily connected will power the SEMI for hours. And uh, so it can be operated on a battery uh, type of situation. And again, the, the new rules uh, from the FI, FEI with regard to PEMF, as they describe it, or high power machines, limit the machines to a thousand gauss of output. And the SEMI uh, will do that. Another question that we received last week, do we have letter verification from the FEI uh, that the SEMI can be used? I've inquired to the FEI about the regulations. Uh, what we received back were the regulations. If your equipment meets these specifications, according to what they sent back, uh, it can be used. Now, I don't think that they're going to allow someone to have a piece of equipment that will generate, let's say, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 gauss and say that if we use this attachment, I don't know if they'll allow that. But if you have a, a, a device that with specific attachments that can be regulated, I think that they'll allow those devices to be used if they fall within the 1,000 gauss uh, delivery uh, capability. So uh, that's the question with regard to uh, FEI. Folks, if you have any other questions, just throw them up there and I'd be happy to address them. Um, and it says, do you have a letter from FEI allowing use of the SEMI device? What we have from the FEI is a regulation as to what they will allow as far as Gauss output of a device and we've addressed that with the SEMI with the attachments uh, to be used. Um, Let's see, uh, when will MagnaWave chair, pad, and body suit hit the market? I don't know. The body suit's an interesting question, but uh, the chair, uh, the chair is, we've we fi fine-tuned what we want to use as a chair. We're uh, in the process of manufacturing the cushions uh, that will be on the chair with PEMF coils uh, inside of the cushions, and uh, so it's ready to go. I would say, realistically, uh, the chair... Uh, will be on the be available through MagnaWave within the month. Um, there are people who would like to have the chair to use the existing mats and pads that they have, and that will certainly be available uh, very quickly. If those who want the chair with the coils built in, it'll probably be yet a month to get that finalized and and nailed down as to how we're going to. Uh, we know how we're going to do it, but just to have the uh, pads and the chairs <clears throat> readily available at that point. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, bringing that to the marketplace. For those who have clinics or those who want uh, just a relaxation chair that they can use and move from, from place to place. Um, has anyone treated a horse with pole evil? What attachments did you did you use? Pole evil is an inflammation of the neck and the, the, the spine area that basically causes the pole to become inflamed and, and inflammation and painful and, and the whole nine yards. So thinking about it from that particular perspective, uh, what the MagnaWave does, the MagnaWave PEMF, relieves inflammation helps relieve the inflammation. So if you have an inflamed condition, now if it's caused, what's causing it? Is it caused by an infection? Is it caused by uh, whatever it may be? That may need to be dealt with accordingly, uh, but will it help reduce inflammation that's in the area? Yes, uh, you could use the wings, you could use the large loop over the neck. Actually, any attachment that you are comfortable with that you're using to treat the area or to pre perform a session on the area to aid in inflammation reduction and pain relief uh, could be very beneficial to uh, that type of situation. So uh, let's see if I have some other questions here, folks. If you have any questions that you'd like me to approach, just uh, 
put them into the uh, chat box here and we'd be happy to do that. If you want to uh, text me a question, you can certainly do that. Send your text to 502-271-8400 and I'd be happy to uh, answer it for you. Or you could, um, let's come up and turn this one off, or you can email your question to magnawave1 at gmail.com and I'd be happy to some, see if something came up here. Nope. Uh, be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and so, good morning, folks, and we're glad you're we're glad you're with us. Um, again, any questions? Put them up there. We'd be happy to do it. Uh, another question that received: How can we promote MagnaWave at dog agility events? Well, you know, it, it's uh, you would certainly uh, when I've gone to dog events, the people that are competing typically are set up around the area. Uh, they have areas uh, sectioned off where you can where they're working uh, with their dogs and, and they have them in their crates or whatever where they're whatever they're doing. Certainly, you could pass out newspapers uh, in those situations. You could pass out flyers or business cards. Uh, addressing what's going on. It would be really uh, just sitting uh, talking about it specifically. Uh, we, I'm sure we'd be uh, talk to Aaron in our in our office and I'll do that as well. But we could produce a flyer that addresses agility, how the MagnaWave PEMF can be used for mobility, increased range of motion, uh, anything like that that's going to help an agility dog uh, perform a recovery uh, between uh, between runs that they want to keep them energized and and feeling good to again keep the rape range of motion in place so I would say that you perhaps in some of these events you can uh, rent a booth and provide treatments at the booth to where they could bring their dog lay it on the mat have the dog sit on the mat and treat it up 10 minutes bingo away they go and uh, you get some good uh, visibility and some good business from that perspective it's been used a lot with agility dogs uh, to, again, to help them perform better, recover uh, more rapidly, and to be effective. So it's just a matter, and certainly when you do this, when we talk about this in the MagnaWave Business Checklist, for those of you who are practitioners, you want to you want to be professional, look professional, have good information, uh, have your have your gear with you, or MagnaWave gear, and and just certainly look the part. If you, I always say, if you believe in what you're doing, and those around you can see that you believe in what you're doing, and you understand and know how to do what you're doing, and you have a good bedside manner, this can work for you, and you can be successful at agility, dog benefits, rodeos, uh, chiropractic meetings, flea markets, wherever you want to go to promote your business if you are approaching MagnaWave uh, as a business to uh, for health and wellness uh, with your with your people, with your, your customers. Um, so questions, throw them in there and I'd be happy uh, to take a look at them and, and address them. Um, let's see, here's a question. Has anyone had success with HydroWave in conjunction with um, tendon injur injuries? Well, you know, hydro wave is a is a is a concentrated water that's that's oxygenated with that's not oxygenated. We use the oxygen that's in the water to create clusters of oxygen uh, cells attached to nano sized particles of silver to help put oxygenation into the bloodstream. And, and when you drink it, it goes into the bloodstream and these little clusters of oxygen can go around and fight and, and attack bacteria and help uh, the body in that perspective maintain wellness. When you're, when you're dealing, is it good to have oxygen in the blood circulating around the areas that you're treating? Absolutely. Is when I say that HydroWave is specifically uh, going to aid the tendon area, well, improved oxygenation is good. We're doing that with the device when we treat the tendon or wherever you happen to be treating, whether it's a person, a knee, whatever it may be. Uh, so, but to use HydroWave for that specifically, I don't know that you're going to see a dramatic improvement in conjunction with the MagnaWave that you're using. Would it hurt? Absolutely not. Could it benefit? Well, any oxygenation is good. Uh, would I say you're going to get that much better improvement immediately with HydroWave? I, I wouldn't. I'm not going to stretch to the point just to be saying something, uh, to to be just to be saying it. That that's not the key that that we want to uh, that we want to project. Um, so let's see. Um, 
it, 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 HydroWave is a great product, and we were going to have a webinar about it uh, last Thursday, but we had some uh, health issues in the family we had to address, and so we weren't able to uh, have that uh, particular webinar. We will reschedule. In fact, I think it's been rescheduled probably for about three weeks from now. Uh, this week, we're going to be with Alex Hassinger from Lubricin, talking about the various Lubricin products and how they work very well on their own and they can be enhanced uh, with the utilization of MagnaWave to help metabolization, help things be moved through the body. So we look forward to, Alex and I have been friends for a long time, back from when uh, I was working with Lubricin when that product for, first launched. I met Alex in uh, California and uh, we had a good time and, and uh, we both learned a lot from that association and so we're looking forward to Alex being on the on the program with us this Thursday on the Magna, Magna Wave Wellness Webinar, two o'clock on Thursday. If you haven't registered, please do. And uh, we look forward to answering any questions and better educating you on um, at, at that point. Let's see, we have a question here. Oh, any questions for Pat? Yeah, if you have a question, uh, put it up there and I'd be happy to uh, take a look at it and address it. Let's see. Um, Another question, anybody know where I can, do you know where I can purchase an attachment you plug into the vehicle uh, to run a semi off of? Well, yes, they make uh, inverters, uh, 200, 300 watt inverters that you would plug into your car, uh, battery connection. Um, it's interesting when, they, you know, cigarette lighter. They still have cigarette lighters in cars, uh, but I don't think they call them cigarette lighters anymore. They call them energy sources, perhaps. I don't know. But uh, uh, any inverter that you can purchase that is a pure sine wave. A sine wave is a form of wave that's clean. It's, it's smooth and how it produces the electrical energy that is necessary for your, for your machine. Something that is not a pure sine wave in some cases can... Uh, cause the machine not to operate properly, can uh, damage the machine potentially. So we always recommend a pure sine wave inverter, and that's on the box. If you go to buy an inverter, to again, two to 300 watt inverter, and it'll read it on the box, it'll say sine wave. And But that's what you want um, to use uh, with the equipment that you're powering uh, with an inverter uh, that you may be using. Uh, let's see if you have any questions, folks, just jump in there and I'd be happy to uh, take a look at them for you. Uh, something came up yesterday that, that we were discussing and that and that has to do with uh, FDA and, and, and things like that. And, and there is a question. We do have another question here, but let me do this FDA thing quickly here. Uh, people talk about what's FDA approved and or cleared or registered. The FDA has many different terms that they use. The primary term is cleared. If something is cleared by the FDA, that means they've met the rigorous requirements to be accepted and, and, and basically approved, cleared, whatever it may be uh, with the FDA. Now you can register a device with the FDA saying we are in this process. We, are, we have a device that is a class one device or a class two device that doesn't fall under necessarily the FDA regulations or is considered an off the shelf device, which most of our devices are considered as off the shelf wellness devices. Uh, and, and so you can have various classifications within the FDA so something can, can be registered. But once something is cleared, it can be cleared as a original device that this device was created and, and in, in um, what, uh, what is I can't think of the word, but invented uh, for this particular purpose, and we're going to get this cleared by the FDA for this particular purpose, and it's a brand new device with brand new technology. So that's one classification from the FDA. Another one is what they call predicate. You have a device that is very similar to a device that's used for general inflammation or general wellness. Uh, then, and it's based on the same technology, just a little different, maybe a little different design, different name, and, and you can get devices approved by the FDA as what they call predicate devices, meaning there's other devices like it on the market, so yours is accepted as well. And, and you see the thing about FDA, people say, well, is, is this cleared uh, by the FDA for, and the specific question was, was migraines. And, um, and so, there are devices that have been cleared by the FDA for migraines, autism, uh, depression, uh, anxiety, 
uh, many different uh, situations like that, but you see the FDA is design specific, design, name, uh, function, all of that specific. And the example that I always use is Viagra. Viagra is an enhancement uh, drug and it's also a heart drug, but they simply, they realized what it, how it could be used for enhancement uh, capabilities. And so they changed the color, they changed the design, they changed the, the function that it was doing, and they got it uh, FDA cleared for this. And then there's another drug that's used for, um, for heart issues. And so that's how that works. So you can say, and really the way to say that is the modality. The modality of PEMF, um, the modality, well, let's see here. Yes, the modality of PEMF is used and cleared by the FDA for many different devices, many different uh, situations. So you have this device that's used for brain cancer, a new one. There is a new one for glioblastoma. It's like a little cap that you wear, and it's a PEMF device. And then there's uh, the one for non-union fractures. There's your TMS. And here's where things get confusing. Someone says, well, TMS is trans, uh, mag transmagnetic stimulation. They don't call it PEMF. They call it TMS. And so you don't find it under PEMF. You find it under TMS. But when you get into their literature and get to looking at things, you see it's pulsed electromagnetic uh, therapy. And, and that's used in many, in many different ways. And so the companies will create their product. They'll create their definition of what they're delivering so they have it tied to their product. So it really, really gets very confusing. And so people will have a tendency to say, well, this is approved by the FDA. And, and in fact, the machine that they're talking about is not approved by the FDA. The modality may be approved by the FDA for something else. So it, it, it gets confusing. But the key thing is uh, if something is cleared. So if you have a question relating to that, just uh, put it up there, folks, and I'd be happy uh, to take a look at it. Let's see. I think we do. Uh, I do think we do have a question. Let's see here. Let me take a look. Is HydroWave safe to use in a nebulizer? Jennifer, great question. Uh, thanks for asking. Uh, let's see here. Now, how do I? Uh, there we go. Um, got to learn how to use my buttons here. We got we're adding features as we as we go along. Yes, MagnaWave can be used in a nebulizer uh, very effectively, and you can use it straight uh, without breaking it, without, it's a concentrate, but you could use it straight, or you could mix it 50-50 or 70-30 or with uh, distilled water, put it into your nebulizer, and then have your, have your you know, whoever it's being used, uh, use the nebulizer to get it into the system. Uh, we use it a lot in the Centurion Transpirator, the difference between uh, there are some nebulizers that basically what they do is they take the they take the medication or they take the liquid, turns it into droplets, puts it into the into the system, the tongue and the nose and the and the respiratory area, and it's absorbed and it, it passes through in that fashion. And then you have a device like the Centurion transpirator where the the liquid is actually turned into a gas. And so it's actually in, inhaled and penetrates into the lungs very deeply. And uh, we found uh, some uh, racehorse trainers that use it, love it because it fights infections very effectively, which it would do in a standard nebulizer. So the short answer to your question, uh, Jennifer, is yes. Uh, the the um, HydroWave is very effective to be used <clears throat> in a nebulizer or a nebulizer type of uh, situation. You could also drink it. Uh, you could put it in the drinking water of the animal. We do that a lot of times with small animals. Put a cap full into their daily drinking water, and you're giving them that ingestion of the the clusters of oxygen and silver. And what happens is the silver uh, allows it to be moved into the bloodstream. Now, the silver is nano-sized particles, so it's not considered a heavy metal, but it takes these clusters of oxygen and moves it into the bloodstream, and then it's able to, to move around the body when it comes up upon bacteria or whatever. It's there. It breaks apart, attacks, comes back together, and moves through the body again until such time that it's passed uh, from the body. That's why you do it on a continual basis to always have it uh, in the body. What I do, I take it every day. I take about a quarter of an ounce <clears throat> every day, and uh, so a 16-ounce bottle will last me a month or a month and a few days. Uh, it's very effective to do it in that manner. Just put it in your drinking water in the morning or soft drink, whatever you want to uh, to do to utilize it 
uh, as you go through the day. Great question again. Folks, if you have any other questions, uh, put them up there. I'd be happy uh, to answer them and uh, give you the answers that you're, that you're looking for. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Again, if you'd like to uh, give me a call, you can do that. Uh, we're available here to uh, take your calls um, right here at 502-599-9722. And I'd be happy to talk with you and discuss whatever it is that you're, you have on your mind. So we've been going here for a little bit. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know, and I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I don't want to just ramble, but I do want to answer any questions you have. I hope that was clear uh, on the FDA. Uh, and so where are we with our devices? And people will ask that. And we have spark chamber devices, and we have uh, digital devices. At this point in time, the digital devices are what we have in process for FDA. The FDA has created a classification for our manufacturer to uh, apply, and we have studies that are being uh, performed. We have safety testing that is performed on all of our digital devices, and uh, we have done safety testing in the past on the analog devices or the spark chamber devices, but the digital devices are where we are going with the FDA uh, clearance or FDA approval on those devices. Hopefully, uh, if everything goes well, that can be accomplished uh, within the next year. Uh, so those devices will be uh, uh, accordingly. Now, there will be some upgrades uh, to those devices as we go along, and those final upgrades are what will be uh, submitted, I'm sure, uh, for FDA um, work and hopefully FDA clearance. Is it guaranteed? No. I mean, it, nothing is, and, you, and it, it, has it cost a lot of money? Yes. <laughs> has it caused a lot of work for the factory and for those of us who are helping fund and work on those things? Yes. And uh, now how will that work? Well, it, it basically, that's another question that was asked. Uh, our, we, we have a couple of factories that we work with, and our factory that builds the digital devices, um, uh, anybody that's associated, there are a couple of other distributors of these those products in the country, and uh, so they will be approved in, in that fashion if every, once everything gets approved. With that said, I'd also want to say that, that uh, MagnaWave and our associate companies and our factory feels that safety testing is very important, uh, not only for the ability to export the devices outside of the United States, or for the FDA submissions, but just for general uh, application to, to you, the customer, that the devices are safety tested, that we do try to maintain good safety standards. I'm not saying that other people don't, but I'm just telling you that, that we do it, and it's there. We also carry complete, our factory carries complete liability, product liability coverage. MagnaWave carries complete liability coverage, which is very expensive. It can cost anywhere from thirty, fifty dollars to $100,000 a year to have uh, product liability coverage for your products. So our factory has it, we have it. Our other factory that we deal with, the PMF Solutions folks, also has product liability insurance. They are also in, engaged in beginning safety uh, studies on, not safety studies, but safety testing on their equipment. To me, those things are paramount. Uh, work hard to have quality products and safe products for the consumers and your and your customers to have access to. Okay, let's see. We got another uh, question here. Uh, let's see. Let me come up to this one. How long should you wait after joint injections to MagnaWave a horse? Uh, very good question. You know, when we started, when when I first started with uh, with MagnaWave and and treating horses, uh, it really wasn't a question. The, the, the veterinarian would come out and, and give injections, uh, and we would go treat. We'd treat the – we most of the time treated the upper body. Uh, we didn't – if they injected a hock or a knee or something like that, we didn't always treat that knee. Uh, we would treat the body. Now, once in a while, they would ask us to, to treat the knee, and we would, and things were, were good. Uh, the half-life of those injections, I forget what it is, but I want to say it's 80 – 86 hours or something. I forget how. And I don't remember that number. I used to be able to just throw that number right off. But the, the, those injections the, don't last long, but they're into the, and they're also into the sac. They, they're inject, injecting into the, the, the bursa area, into the joint sac itself. And so it's not going to go anywhere. 
we treat it, it's not going to move. It's going to do its job. It's going to work on the inflammation, and we're kind of working on the area around it. But with that said, when we first started, we'd treat the upper body of the horse, and they'd go inject the knees, the, the hocks, the ankles, whatever they were doing, and we're just improving the overall blood flow of the body, which helps inflammation in addition to the joints. With that said, it's kind of become the norm now that if they inject, we wait 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, a couple of days, and then go back if you're going to specifically treat the area. And that makes sense. Let the injection that the doc is providing do its job. Let them get maximum effect from that, and then you can come in to support it because you're you're well beyond the half-life at that point, and it's, and it's going to need support. A lot of times people say, well, we inject every six months. Well, what happens is it takes a long time for that inflammation to sometimes occur. So if they inject, they get rid of the inflammation, the joint's working at its good capability and maximum capability. It may take months before that issue creeps back up to where it's a problem again. And if you're treating along the way, that can be greatly extended to where they don't need as many injections or as often. So that's, that's the basis there on how we can support those types of activities when it comes to uh, injections. Let's see. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look here and said, um, I've had quite a few clients comparing red light therapy to MagnaWay. I was curious what your short answer to these questions would be. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, very good question, um, and I would uh, I'll take that for you. Red light therapy or light emitting diode therapy, laser therapy, all are very good for what they do. They're working to improve some blood flow in the area. They're working to uh, help heal the area. And but when it comes down to it, uh, they can be effective. They are very complementary to what MagnaWave is doing, or MagnaWave can be very complementary to what light therapy is doing. Light therapy has a tendency to be shallower in its acceptance within the body, and so, and, but it is, it does provide some stimulation to, to make things flow a little better in that particular area. And then there's residual. I mean, if they go in, you know, if it goes in this far and they get residual effect you know, another inch or, or however you want to say that, that's a good thing. And, and so the, the difference is a lot of times those, those light pads are smaller, you know, whatever size it may be, or they may stretch them down the, the back of the horse. That's fine. They do penetrate. MagnaWave will penetrate the bone, the cartilage, the tendon, the, or whatever is there, the nerves, the muscle, the soft tissue, and go much deeper. So we are enhancing the area. I can say, and this is not this is not a slam to, to light therapy at all. I've done lasers for years, and I'm a big believer in how the two can, can work together. But when we started, again, there were practitioners who joined us who were therapists, and they used their lasers or their light therapy a little less uh, than they did before because MagnaWave was able to accomplish a lot of the same uh, situations very rapidly on a larger scale and a deeper penetration. So uh, that's a good thing. Complimentary? Absolutely. Uh, and I, I hope that helps answer your answer your question, Jesse. A good question. Let's see. We've got another one here. Let me put it up here and take a look. I saw a post someone asking about the HydroWave helping dog with tendon injury. Can you discuss how HydroWave can be used uh, with horses in a tent? I did that a, a couple of minutes ago. Lindsay, I'm sorry. Uh, you missed it. Uh, go check out the video. But in short, uh, HydroWave, improves the oxygenation of the blood as it moves through the body and fights bacteria. Basically, it's an infection or a bacteria fighter. Can it? Can that improved oxygenation be beneficial uh, to the tendon area? Sure. Is it something that I would say take HydroWave for this tendon? Not necessarily. I'd treat the, uh, the tendon with the MagnaWave and go from there. Is good hydration with HydroWave good for the overall health of the body? Uh, yes. And, and so can it be complementary to what you're doing with uh, anything on the body? I would think so. So uh, great question, to, question, Lindsay. Thank you uh, for asking. Um, uh, for those of you who heard that a minute ago, uh, there you go. So uh, any other questions, uh, put them out there and I'd be happy to answer them. Again, you can text me at 502-271-8400. Uh, Give me a call if you'd like. Let me put that number up again if someone... Uh, 
would like to uh, give me a call. Uh, 502 Oh, that's the office number. If you got a question for the office, there it is. 502-742-7868. Got to talk to my engineer here to make sure he knows which buttons to, uh, to push properly. Uh, if you'd like to call me, it's 502-599-9722 if you'd like to uh, ask a question. I keep throwing that out there because uh, back in the day I did some talk radio and it was always fun conversing with people and, and uh, folks have a question that they want to ask or a conversation. If there's a conversation that we could have, the FDA is a perfect uh, thing that could be uh, conversationally discussed if necessary uh, or if people would uh, would like to. So um, we're uh, about 40 minutes in. Uh, any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. We will be back this afternoon at 2 o'clock with another session of MagnaWave Office Hours. If, you'd if you missed this or you'd like to come back, uh, let's see uh, if there's any questions that have come up here. Nope, doesn't look like any uh, questions. Oh, nope, oh, here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this is for... Nope, uh, I thought it was a question uh, through the Gmail account, but it's there. If you'd like to send me a question in the mail, uh, in the email, that would be wonderful. Uh, so, okay, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll give you another minute. If you have any questions, uh, put them up there. It's always fun uh, being here with you. I uh, thank you very much for being here uh, and asking the questions, submitting the questions through the week that we can come back and answer for you. I will try to do different things this afternoon so we're not just redundant. Uh, we want to uh, answer questions that are pertinent at the time. If you have a question that you'd like for us to cover, uh, please just uh, send it to us and we'll cover it on the afternoon session. So, folks, I appreciate you uh, being here with me this morning, and we look forward to uh, seeing you this afternoon, 2 o'clock. Oh, don't forget Thursday. I'm going to be with Alex Hassinger on the MagnaWave Wellness webinar uh, discussing Luberson and their fine family of products. And then a week from Thursday, we'll again be visiting the C60 product uh, for telomer production. Telomers kind of tell you how long you're going to live, and uh, C60 is said to increase the uh, telomer lengths and uh, give you better health and, and happiness. And uh, by the way, an update there. Uh, my wife has been having some issues. She's had some issues with her with her heart for some years, and nothing critical, but she does have some issues, and we just had those taken care of last week. But when she went to uh, do her blood work, um, which improved uh, which I've shared before, she took, started taking C60 and her blood work was better than it had been in two or three years. And she went back and had her blood work done before she had her uh, work done on her, on her heart this last uh, couple of weeks. And her everything else was very stable uh, in line with where it was the last time her, her blood work was taken. So we're pretty excited about the effects of C60 and how it helps a lot of different issues uh, with your body. So that's in two weeks. And then again, a week after that, we'll be back on the HydroWave water. If you have a topic that you'd like to see us discuss when it comes to health and wellness, we would be happy to do that. Let us know what, what it would be. Uh, we're trying to line up a meeting with Dr. Tody Jimenez, Jimenez um, from Hope for Cancer to be with us and talk about what they do at Hope for Cancer in Tijuana, Cancun, and in South America. That'll be an interesting program. So if you got a program you'd like to uh, have us cover, please let us know. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you this afternoon. Have a great morning. Bye-bye.